Hi guys, Tom here from the Diabetes Chat Spaces. This new feature, Diabetes Chat Stories, talks to people just like you. If you're a parent, carer, a friend, a partner, or someone with diabetes, or associated with diabetes, we'll be sharing your story and your journey with everyone. So let's see who we've got this time around. So this week on the Diabetes Chat Story, we have Gary and Sarah, and later on we're going to be joined by Max, and they're going to share their story of Max's diabetes, and um, it's going to be really interesting to see um, how they've uh, managed Max's diabetes over the years. So hi guys, how are you? Hi, hi Tom, you okay? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. It's nice to see you both. Yeah, and you, and you. it's a nice day, isn't it? I can see yeah. your conservatory there, the sun is shining. Nice day, yeah, absolutely. It's great. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Max's journey then? So let's go right back to the beginning where um, he was first diagnosed or maybe in, in the lead up of him being diagnosed, what happened? Did you notice any symptoms? Um, just tell us a little bit about that. Obviously, there are obvious symptoms now, but obviously back then we didn't have a clue. He, he just had um, a general cold. He was just feeling a little bit unwell. Um, he's, he was wearing nappies at the time, so um, his nappies used to explode all the time um, because obviously he was, um, he was weeing quite a lot. And we just couldn't understand why it was happening. And I was blaming all the nappy companies, you know, saying, why is it doing this? It's not holding in the euro like it should. And, and looking back at the pictures, he looked really thin and white and... Um, he, he just looked, you know, it was just lifeless when he, but obviously at the time we didn't really know. We just thought it was just, just a general, you know, cold. And so uh, we ended up taking him to the doctors um, and she she did ask us if there were any diabetics in the family. Um, but obviously there wasn't on both sides. Yeah. So she could have done a, a, a check there and then, but she didn't. So she just sent us home with antibiotics. Yeah. Um, so Matt, because Matt was only 18 months when he got it to him, and like Sarah said, we just, when you're with him all the time, you don't really notice the weight loss as much um, until, like like Sarah said, then we look back at photographs and go, wow, how did we not notice? Yeah. Um, I mean, Sarah, every time I come home from work, we have a different brand of nappy because <laughs> yeah. we thought it was the nappies that were no good because yeah, yeah, yeah. every morning his cot was just leaking wet. And yeah. um, you had to change him in the shower, didn't you? Then you had to yeah, because all the chemicals was on his stomach and I had to give him a shower to get him all off. And... Yeah. Re really bad. And then it, it got scary when, because the week before he was diagnosed, um, the, 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 you know, not knowing what was the matter with him, but obviously we thought he just had a cold, you know, those, those symptoms. Um, we were at a birthday party and me being me, I'm like, oh, he needs, he's all right. Give him a bit, give him some cake. He yeah. build him up a little bit. He's fine. Obviously not knowing at that point that by doing that was probably making it a lot, well, would have been making it a lot worse for us, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, and then, like like I said, we, we went to that doctor and we were, we still are really, really disappointed in what had happened because she had mentioned if she never had, if the doctor had never mentioned diabetes to me because we you know before you live with diabetes you don't know about it do you, you don't know what it is um and she mentioned it but then she she's then you know put it under the, the seat and said it's not that then here's some antibiotics on your way and then the next day um, I was at work. Because in, in the moment, in the moment, you might have not clicked all them things together. It didn't the, the jigsaw puzzle no. together. But when you look back now, like you're yeah, saying, yeah. you think, yeah. why didn't they do a, a simple blood test that yeah. like you could then you could see the numbers and then you would have gone straight to hospital. That's it. Yeah. So we, I went to work the day after. It was we were having a. We'll never forget the day because it was uh, Halloween. And yeah, we were having a Halloween yeah. party that night um, on the Friday, weren't we? Where we yeah, had family... my, yeah, my brother was coming around with my nephews and they'd all got the little costumes on. But obviously, you know, we had to rush him to, to the doctors. What, um, what, what um, costume did Max have on? Oh, I think they all looked the same. We, we all matched them up. I think it was just like a little skeleton. So oh, we wow. in one costume. Yeah. Um, yeah, so and obviously he was all um, lifeless and... Of course. We didn't like the look of him, so 
we just took him straight to the doctors and she wasn't happy with his breathing and so we just went straight to the, the hospital yeah. so yeah we we sarah phoned me at work and said look you have to come home max isn't very well and again me being a typical dad is if you like going well hang on we were only at the doctors yesterday they told us he was all right he's yeah. got a virus and we yeah, only put all the antibiotics so give them a chance to work yes but i came right home sarah had seen something online as well or somewhere with that dr chris who was explaining the symptoms of diabetes and sarah mm. actually phoned me and said i think he's diabetic yeah yeah i'm like there's no way he's diabetic no way it's not to us it wouldn't happen to us that would happen to us and did, not, you, did you know much about diabetes up until that point? Because uh, it's not in the family. I mean, the only thing I can remember when I was a kid, there was a girl in school and she was diabetic and now and again she used to get a snack out to have, you know, to keep her bl uh, blood really levels sad. up. That's the only, but obviously I didn't really know much about it really. Yeah. So, because it's not in the family, you don't really know any symptoms or anything. Yeah. So... And that Halloween time was probably, well, obviously the scariest Halloween of our lives because <laughs> when I came home and saw him, Max was pretty much only communicating with us through his eyes. He was so lifeless. Yeah. So we picked him up, like Sarah said, took him to our GP. We didn't have an appointment. We literally just walked him in. Um, and I think somebody did mention that I needed to have an appointment. Now, I'm quite a laid back guy, but when it's your son and they can, you can clearly see that he's struggling, so they sent us to yeah so see him so they sent us to the stafford hospital and max was the last patient in the children's ward at stafford hospital it actually closed at midnight mm -hmm. that night while we were there didn't it yeah um but what we will always say one of the things we'll always remember i, I just wish that we had got the nurse's name because he was brilliant and we were right on the like reception because max was high intensity you know they need to keep an eye on him but they said to us if we can't get his ketone levels sorted in the next hour we're gonna to have to transfer you to birmingham intensive care unit now we went from he's got a virus he has antibiotics to he's in danger you might lose him yeah hey eh? yeah and it was a massive shock to both of us hot worst day of our lives but the nurse there he was brilliant i mean wasn't he? he was checking max's blood every 15 minutes and getting the results back every 15 minutes that yeah. quickly yeah and when he got the result that he needed he reacted like i would react watching liverpool win the champions league he was up and jumping around going, we've got him he's fine yes and he came to me and sarah and said well you go to sleep now we've got this under control and then we didn't obviously sleep <laughs> and max was in a coma 48 hours really pretty much So, obviously, when you got discharged from hospital, you went home and it was like a new life, wasn't it? Starting all over again. It's like having a, like we've spoke already, it's like having a new baby from the beginning. Maybe yeah. tell us a little bit about that and how it changed your life and what you had to do. Well, it was when we first had to give him insulin because he had to eat. Yes. And I think Gary, I was struggling, but because Gary was struggling to, to, to do it because he didn't like the thought of giving his son a needle yeah but obviously someone had to do it so obviously i like you know stepped up and like, stayed stronger but just give that that first insulin uh, we didn't know whether we did it properly yeah. so it was like oh did the insulin go in we don't, we don't even know what's happening yeah so that was a bit weird wasn't it really yeah but um it was hard and i think i, I mentioned it before tom but for as a dad and Max, Max was really good at talking at quite a young age as well. Yeah, he was yeah. really good at talking. Mm. And when he woke up from the coma in the hospital and the diabetes team come over to us, uh, and when we had to give him that, he was pleading me not to let him do it. He literally cuddling me to go, don't let him do it, Dad. And for a dad to have to actually then hold him tighter to, so that they could do it. So the one person he trusts more than anybody yes. is now in his mind going, hang on a minute. This is not what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, but I think what probably, and Sarah was brilliant, like Sarah said, she took command of it when we got home. I just couldn't get my head around doing it. I think it took quite a long time before I did do it. I think it was a good week or so, wasn't it, for you to yeah. get, it, get it right in your head. And yeah. Although he was around to help. Of just, course. To actually deliver that insulin because he was on an insulin pen then. Yes. 
to actually physically do that himself. It took her a while for you yeah, to do that. It's hard. But, but like you say, it's it's that mindset and 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 you learning it as well and also like like you said you're injecting it and you're thinking did that work like yeah, yeah, yeah. even yeah. even me who's had diabetes 16 years and i inject myself i say to myself did that work because sometimes when you, you take it out and there's there's no like little drop left or when you think did that work and and then in your mind you think oh and then you're going to check later on and you're going to know if it's had that impact or not um yeah. But yeah, absolutely interesting stuff. And then obviously, then early years, really, you you're obviously on um, injections, and you're obviously checking Max's fingers by um, blood by check, pricking his fingers. Um, and then I guess, like we've said before, you were waking up a lot, weren't you, every couple of hours, and constantly checking him and making sure he was all right. To be honest, looking back, you think, how how did we do that? Because, yeah. you know, because he used to sort of go to bed. We had to be on a certain number, didn't it? So yeah. we used to have to give him like half a, a digestive biscuit before going to bed. And that all seemed to work. And then, yeah, I just don't know, I don't <laughs> know we how that. we used to do it. Because now it's sort of, you can see it on your phone. Like if you happen to wake up, look at the phone quick. And then just yeah. go back to sleep again. So it's, it's a lot easier. Yeah. And with the technology now, it's evolved so much, hasn't it, over the years. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that then? So he was three, was he, when he went on to the pump and technology? He was three. Yeah. So we, we me and Sarah really, and it wasn't our fault we've forgotten it, but Max's diabetes is chronic. So if he had half a biscuit, even a quarter of a biscuit, his bloods could go from four to 24 within an hour. It yeah. was that bad. Yeah. So to try and control that with an insulin pen become impossible. And like, like Sarah said, we just couldn't sleep. We, even during the day, we're looking at him going, is he all right? And the, the problem, and it is a problem, although it's not, well, it is a big problem, that, but Max never showed any symptoms. So he was no different when he was at level two yes. or if his bloods were 24. He yeah. never looked any different. He's still playful and he was still, yeah. we were out once and he went to one point something yeah. when we were out Christmas, looking for Christmas trees at the check, but he never showed any symptoms of it. No. And then we said, we better check his bloods. Yeah. We checked them, he's 1.8. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, flip me. You know, so we, we sorted that. But um, yeah, so when he was three, we had discussions with our diabetes team about putting him on insulin pump. Now, that was a big decision for us to make because when Max has no insulin pump, diabetes is invisible to everyone else around us. Because for some reason, you've got this thing, you've got this in your mind that you don't want him to look different to anybody else. You don't want him to be different. And I don't want him to feel different. So diabetes with no pump is invisible to everyone. Else, mm -hmm. and no one would know if he had it or not apart from us mm -hmm. and the insulin pump was a massive decision yeah. and it was emotional when he first got it it still is in a way it still is isn't it yeah. especially it's when there, you see the, it? the, it's, the it's things on his, on, on his arm or on his arm or yes you know it's sort of it's like oh yeah it's, it's, it's like he's all wired up <laughs> yeah. it, it, it is still that you still have that thought now when you look at him and you see this thing stuck to him yeah. you know these you know the G cgm and the pump yeah. and i know it's brilliant but it's but the yeah. day the day he had it we went to the doctors to get it fitted max was a mess he's screaming the place down he just did not want it done yeah. um, and i remember they came around our house and they stuck like a they, we put it on didn't we, we put the um, cannula on you know just to show him it didn't hurt you yeah, yeah, yeah. um and to, to try and make him feel better but he was a mess Tom and it, and it took him a, you know a bit of time to get used to it of course um, but... I think the, the, the one day I was putting it on and his nurse was due to come and I had my windows open because it was warm and he was she could hear him screaming from outside as she come in and she yeah. was she fitting his cannula I went yeah I said, you wouldn't let me do it I had to hold him down to try and do it because yeah. he was just scared because yeah. I, I mean obviously it's got to hurt a little bit as it went in of course but um and I guess he was yeah. like, trying to get used to it isn't it 
for like yeah. a year and a half. He's had injections. He's gone through that sort of ordeal and, and trying to get used to mum and dad injecting him. And now yeah. he's got this thing that's attached to him. Yeah. Um, I, I guess with injections, is once you've injected, you can that's it. You, you put your pen away and it's done for a couple of hours or whenever your next injection is. But like you said, the pump's there all the time. And obviously it depends what type of brand you've got, if it's the tubeless one or with the tube. Um, And I know for me, over the years when I discussed going on pumps, I was petrified of having sort of wires and things connected to me um, because I didn't want it on on show. But but looking back at it now, I think it's it's the way forward, isn't it? Um, Yeah. To to manage your diabetes much better. And it, so, do, so does the pump, it connects to the um, CGM and you can see all the data and you can see what levels, maxes. It, it, yeah, it totally changed our life, Tom. It has it totally, yeah. it, you, have your, you have your initial, there's issues, there's still issues with it. Cool. There's still, you still have the days where you think, oh, you know, it's not going according to plan, but very rare. Yeah. Um, and with what he's, so he started on the Medtronic 6, 40g mm-hmm. and with the cgm so we're very very lucky to have that yeah um which which was great but now matt is on the 780g with cgm and this thing is a tool ball it's a game changer so the hospital for instance can monitor matt's bloods from the hospital even now so it goes on my phone so yeah. when he's home and it sends a care link it's called and it sends it to his hot the hospital and if there's any changes that need to be made, they will call us on the phone. and say, change yeah. something in the, in the, the system. It's not like but the old the, times, is it, where you used to take your books, you go to your appointments every three months or six yeah, months yeah, or whatever, that. and then yeah. you'd be there like, here you go, and they're, they're looking through and it takes 10 minutes to kind of understand it. Yeah, They're all on graphs now, they can get it. Yeah, yeah, connect to it's it. amazing. I guess they can then see what's happening and then if they feel yeah. well, actually we can maybe help max with someone we're noticing he's a bit high overnight or something so yeah. actually we'll give we'll give mum and dad a ring and we'll suggest maybe his his evening background or whatever to just be increased slightly just yeah. and then because sometimes it you get a bit overwhelmed don't you with all like changes and things and sometimes it's nice for the the healthcare professional to to yeah. link in with you and say actually try this the amazing thing with a 780G, I'll be honest, is that it was scary when we first went on it because they said, just let it do what it's got to do. Yeah. And we were like, well, that's easy for you okay. to say, but he's our son. But basically it learns itself. So it changes itself. So it makes it, the algorithms within the machine change. Yeah. So they learn Max's pattern. So, so you- if his bloods go high or if they start going high, it automatically gives him a correction yes. I mean, we don't even have to get involved in it yes. it starts doing it yes. and then if it goes drops too quickly it switches the insulin off completely Pause and it, tells yeah. yeah tells us what it's doing yes. and then waits for his blood to recover and once it's recovered it starts giving it again it's really clever and yeah. then what about when he's eating them so for his meals or snacks do you have to import how many carbs he's yeah. eating yeah, yeah we still have to do that yeah, yeah. so like certain like foods have got the carbs on at the back of the packaging or if he's sort of having something we've got a little um a weighing machine to weigh certain foods yeah. obviously when you're out and about it's a little bit more difficult so we've got like an app we, we yeah. do like a rough sort of guess yeah, yeah, yeah. but as i say the pump just corrects that if it's slightly out so um it will give him a little bit more if it's you know not not enough yeah but um so yeah, does Max good. have hyper awareness now does he show signs either to you guys or does he have the awareness of actually i don't feel right i'm a bit headachey or feeling confused or we still struggle a little bit i mean when he is slow he he says he just he feels tired mm-hmm. but he, yeah sometimes when he is slow you still can't he still can't, yeah, he tell. can't tell yeah but and i think the other thing with him tom he's a boy he's a little boy of eight and when he's concentrating something he knows that if he tells us he's low or something if to interrupt what he's doing so he tends not to tell you and then you're like max you should have said you know in that's what they're like yeah so there is that as well does this technology 
set alarms or anything? So does he see it if it's low or high? Or what does it indicate to him? Yeah. It uh, vibrates as well. So wow. although it vibrates because it at night, if, if it ever alarms, which to be honest, it hardly ever alarms at night now, which is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if it does, it vibrates. But that's <laughs> that still doesn't wake him up. So yeah. obviously we still have to sort of go in just to check. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So do you guys? Do you get more sleep nowadays? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's only if you sort of you happen to wake up, just have a quick look on the phone, it's fine. And then, you know, it's like say, I keep physically getting up, looking at it, and then coming back. And yeah. So that the, so the phone really is, is brilliant, really. Total life changer. We've gone from checking his fingers about 40 times a day to about three wow. times a day and not having any sleep to now getting a good night's sleep every night. That's just totally amazing. changed our life. Yeah. And Max's catchphrase in this house is my pump's going off. <laughs> well, it's attached to you, Max. Yeah. Just press OK, <laughs> and then it'll stop. My yeah. pump's going off. Yeah, I know. Press the button. It's attached to you. It's attached to yeah. you. You've got less walking to do than that. Just press the OK button. Hey. So when he's eighteen, you'll still be ringing us up and saying my pump's just gone yeah. off. Can you come round? Right? <laughs> you know what? Last weekend I went to. Um, talking about diabetes conference and we've met over 100 people with diabetes or healthcare professionals and it was so interesting like connecting with people and every so often you could just hear someone's um, pump machine going off and it just felt so normal because everyone was just so supportive I'm sure if anyone needed help they would have stepped in but it was just like you were focused on the presentation enjoying the presentation there's some noises going on but you weren't like Oh, what's that? What's that? Because it's it was part of you. Yeah. It's normal. Whereas I guess if someone who doesn't know them sort of things would yeah. be like, oh, what's what's that noise? Um, but the other funny thing with that noise is in school. So he he did say to his teacher he didn't like it going off in assembly, did he? He wanted he to, to set the end. He'd get embarrassed if it went off in yeah. assembly. But one of the good things we had a. Uh, we had a parents' evening once, a few few times ago, whatever. And they said how much this new pump has improved his schooling because yeah. it's less disruptive. So it, it does what it does. So he can concentrate where before he was in and out the classroom. Now he's not. So that's another difference it's made. But the other thing they told us, which was quite funny, is that even all of his classmates will go, Max, this pump's going on. <laughs> so it's like a, it's like a thing in the classroom. To which you would know that, so you know, seeing all the kids doing that was well. Funny. I've read, I've read the first book, and it's incredible. Yeah. I've loved it. Me and Harry read it last night. Um, tonight, my homework is to read um, book two. <laughs> so I wonder if that saying is in this book, and if not, Max and Pump's going off. When you make the third book, you might have yeah. to put it in. Put it in there. Yeah, put definitely. it in. I mean, that, that, is his that is his catchphrase. That is his catchphrase. Yeah, I love it. Lazy. Press the button. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does Max sort of manage his diabetes on a daily basis, and how do you guys support him? The, the like you say, the pump pretty much does everything for Max. So Max will check his bloods. He when he's at school. So what happens every day? The school will call us every day mm -hmm. before they make any. Just because, so usually before lunch, if yeah. it, to be it? honest, though, they don't need to. I think it's just me, I ask them to ring just to clarify, but oh. they know what they're doing, so yeah. they don't really need to ring at all. But I just like them to just to clarify, just so I know. Um, yeah. but yeah, they to be honest, he just I just get them to get him to keep checking it in, himself because obviously, when he's in like year five, year six, he's got to properly do it himself, like you know, without. To yeah. any help, so I think that's going to be hard because I'm sort of, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't want him to grow up. I don't want him to sort of, you know, because I've been doing it a lot. I just think, oh no, I need to do that. Where I should say, no, you do it now. You, you, yeah. what he does, put in because he knows what his carbs are for lunch, and he puts in his own carbs. Mm -hmm. So they, they just let him do that anyway, and then. Um, and yeah. Gary said yeah, when we spoke the other day that when you went to the football to watch Chelsea and Liverpool. He was doing it himself, wasn't he? For like yeah, he does it himself. Times. And yeah, I so he can put his carbs in himself and he pretty much knows how many carbs because he has the same sort of meals. 
Yeah. You know, if he has a pack lunch, it's usually like 54 cards, whatever it is, yeah, and he yeah, puts yeah. it in. He knows that. So he, he does that, which is really good. And the, the other thing with Max now is, and, and again, he's only eight, but he has that awareness of what's good, what's bad. So, for instance, one of the ways he manages it is he will sit there, he will look at his pump, and if it says something like nine with two arrows going up, mm-hmm. he'll go, oh, I can play my fr- I'll play goalkeeping in the front room where he chucks a ball and catches, or gets me to chuck a ball at him. So he, yeah. ha- he plays in goal because he yeah. knows that will bring his bloods back down. Bring back down. And that's how he manages it pretty much. Yeah. He sees it as a, oh, I'm high. That's good. That means I can play. I can do whatever I want to do. You don't like, necessarily need to do a correction. You can, like you say, no, no, do something else, like, yeah. physical exercise or whatever. And I think that's great, yeah. isn't it? You don't have to rely fully on the insulin to no, do no. that. You can do other things. So, yeah, it's good yeah. that he's got that knowledge. He's building have, that understanding. We have taught him to, um, if he is approaching low, to stop what he's doing just so he can recover. Yeah. Because because so, because they're having so much fun it's 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 hard for them to stop so i always get him to keep looking at it if, if it starts to approach low if, it, if there's any arrows i tell him just to completely stop because yeah. i know for a fact it's just going to plummet if he carries on but and he, and he is getting better at that now to be honest yeah. it's and it, it is odd but mm-hmm. it's um but if he does play football or if he's playing with his friends or cousins then we just give him some crisps just to keep it level to keep interrupting him and it does frustrate him. That's one of the horrible bits of diabetes because it does, you know, if he's playing football with his cousins or he's at a birthday party and then his blood start dropping to the fact where they're going to get to the hypo, he's got to stop. You know, and to tell an eight-year-old boy to stop playing, it's really difficult. His parents, it's really yeah. hard. And he sits there and gets quite, you know, he can get quite emotional about it sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I think it breaks you a little bit. So, you know, he, he doesn't mention it very often, but... Yeah. He has said in the pack, I wish I never had this. And that, when he says that, it breaks you. It breaks you, yeah. Yes, he's started to say yeah. that a few more times now, hasn't he? But yes, he's getting older. He does still get to do what he wants. It's just we have to carve him up before having to do So guys, we've got your books, um, fantastic books. So The Adventures of Captain Atlantis. So where did this idea come from? So the idea actually came from Max himself. Wow. Yeah. So he, they must have been doing something at school for him to have the idea. Um, but Sarah, you, you picked him up from school, didn't you? He went back to his... Yeah, he, uh, he came out of school and I think they might have been doing something like writing or or doing like thinking about a little book to write or something or doing something in class and he come up to me and he says oh he says I just want to ask the teacher something he says all right then go and ask her so he went up, he went up to his teacher and says I'm going to write a book she says oh, okay that's nice he says, what are you going to write he says I don't know yet I'll let you know so <laughs> I'll let you know. and then he come back and that's yeah. when he spoke to you yeah because like I say he's only six so he yeah. came in six and he was really excited about it he came in he said dad I want to write a story. I'm going to take it into school on Friday. Will you help me do it? So I'm like, I'll help you do it, Max. Of course I will. So watch your story. And I'm thinking, this could be about anything. anything. (laughs) You know, it could be about anything. So the first thing he said to me, that it got my interest right away, is he said, well, he said, my insulin pump, and this is exactly how he talks, isn't it? Well, (laughs) you know my my insulin pump? I said, yeah. He said, it keeps me alive, doesn't it? Mm. I said, yeah, of course it keeps you alive. Yeah. He said, well, you know Iron Man's got that thing in his chest? I said, yeah. He said, that keeps him alive, doesn't it? I said, yeah. He said, so I'm an Avenger then? And I'm <laughs> yeah, you are, Max. You're an Avenger. So then what we did is, me and him sat together on the set here. We, we folded up some A4 paper. And yeah. It started off as bolus man. And I wrote a bit. And then he folded it on. And so on and so on to see what we had at the end of it. Yeah. We were laughing and making a thing of it a little bit. Um, but what got me is we, we spent a couple of hours doing that probably. And then when I went to bed, I couldn't sleep mm. because I'm thinking, he's on to something here. Yeah. This is something that could be something. Now, I've never written a book. I never did, you know, come out of school with lots of English and all that. I did, you know, I've done better when I've left school than what I did when I was there. But I knew he was on to something. 
So I wrote this story down about Captain Lantus. It was called something different before, but we had we changed the name of it and everything. Um, and I wrote it down and I had it there and I said to Sarah, he's definitely on something. Yeah. So I sent it to the publishing company that to say, can you have a read of it? And do you think it will work? Mm-hmm. Oh, within 24 hours, they came back and said, it will work. It's perfect. And that was it. So during that time, it was lockdown. And I didn't know whether I was going to keep my job at the time. Or it, yeah. was, it was touch and go what was going to happen with our employment. And I just said to Sarah, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put it on a credit card. And I'm going to get that book written mm-hmm. because that book, one, one will make Max really proud. And for me, him seeing him with his own book with his name on it in front of his classmates is priceless. Yeah. But two, this could help so many other children with type one. So going all the way back to what we were talking about when Max first came home with his insulin pump, absolutely terrified, absolutely didn't know what to do. Me and Sarah had leaflets, websites to visit, phone numbers to call. Max had nothing. Yeah. But as soon as I give him that book, he's three-year-old and said, you're a superhero, Max. You are Captain Lantus. That fear, that worry, everything inside that little boy, all that little girl now going forward, gone because they have a character to relate to. Yeah. Um, and we, we've been overwhelmed with the response that we've had from it. Hence why we've done a second book, mm-hmm. um, which again was 20 minutes. I, walk, I went, I walked up the shop and came back from the shop and said, get me a piece of paper. Crunch me. I think I've got another idea, but um, yeah, it, it's been brilliant in all sorts of ways. So for one for Max, because at his school now, everybody talks to Matt, calls him Captain Lancers there, but it gives him the confidence to talk yes. about yes. his diabetes because actually he's a superhero and his classmates think of him like that. Oh. And it, so his confidence, and that's what we want. We've learned that from Max to be able to give it to others, to give it mm. to other children around the world to go, mm. you don't have to hide away because you've got a pump on. Mm. Actually, Captain Lantus wears a pump and he's a superhero. Yeah. So don't be afraid. Absolutely. Um, and that's why we did it. So our aim now, future plan is to, we want to raise, well, we, we do, we need, always need to raise money to keep it going because it costs a lot of money in the background as well. Um, but it's for a good cause and it's something that's close to our hearts. But we're probably looking at A, an activities book next, colour it in, spot the difference, word search, mm-hmm. and then our third book. So the third book, we pretty much got a storyline for, but We've got to get it get it over the line. And do they um, do they follow each other? Because like I said, I've read the first one. Yeah, um, sort of. They they, they sort of do. To, do. You have to get both. Like you should get both. But... Yeah, yeah, you should get both, but mm-hmm. you don't you don't necessarily have to get both. Um, the only thing what I'd say is look any superhero film that's out there at Marvel and everything. Captain Atlantis one will explain to you where he got his insulin pump and where the insulin pump comes from. Mm-hmm. So that's where he gets his powers, mm-hmm. where the second book is more that he lives in the world. So basically they live in a town called Beta Town, okay. which is obviously the cells in your pancreas that disappear, <laughs> and, you know, that get affected with type one. And the mayor of Beta Town is called Mayor Bolas. So she is the mayor and she is the, the, the you know, the owner or the runner of the, of the town and keeps everybody safe and everything. And, like I say, instead of everybody having insulin injections, because everyone who lives in that town has diabetes, mm-hmm. but they're protected by an insulin cube, yeah. it'll be like the Avengers yeah. that keeps them all safe. So obviously the moral of the story is when that gets stolen, everybody starts becoming poorly because they've got no protection. Yes. But the insulin pump is something that they've been secretly working on. Mm-hmm. And Max comes across that pump, puts it on, and you know, does he save the day? We don't know. But there's Captain Lantus 2, and in Captain Lantus 2, he's already Captain Lantus in, Captain, in, in the second book. Yes. So there is an explanation of there's a secret that only him and Mayor Bolas know about it, yes. but you, you get the drift. You don't need both, but it does help if you read the first one. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So what made you um, think of the characters' names? What inspired you for them names? I think... I looked at a lot of different books. There's so many brilliant children's books out there. Um, Year One with Type One is brilliant. And I will put them in mention because it is a really good book. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and there's lots of other children's books out there as well that are really, really good. But I wanted to do it a little bit different because a lot of a lot of the books are more of a, a journey into how they got diabetes. It's about the real person, if you like. So we wanted to do it a little bit different around. So all the names that are, are in that book are linked to diabetes in some way. Yeah. But they're not. So when you're a parent and you're reading the story to the children, you can tell them that Beta Town is called Beta Town because beta cells are what are in your pancreas. Mayor Bolas is called Mayor Bolas because she is insulin. You know, King Carb is a villain, so too many carbs in some stage. I love it. It's very all that sort of Yeah, so you can, you can, you can, so anybody can read it in a way. So we've done it in a way where, yeah, somebody's brother or sister can read it as well and still get the same enjoyment out of it with, with it not just being about the day to day, you know, diabetes what we live in you know the control yeah. and stuff so we did it a little bit different but some of the feedback that we've had from parents and you know you sent us a message a few weeks ago or a couple of last week on on twitter and stuff that to us is priceless that's the biggest motivation that we have got so it's we had on world book day i got sent a picture i got sent a message from a, a, a mum who said thanked me and max um, and max loves it when he does when this happens that what a difference we've made to their son. We've made such a difference to their son that he's made the Captain Lanter's costume himself and gone on World Book Day as Captain. So of all the superheroes he could have went as, yeah. he's gone as Captain Lanter. So Incredible. for me and Sarah and Max, that's poisonous. Yeah. It blows our mind. It's brilliant. And for someone who doesn't have diabetes as well, that's yeah. incredible. The real, yeah. So what's the dream going forward then, guys? Um, I, I think for for uh, we've talked about it because with, with the book me and me and Max, I want I think this book not, it helps so many people across the world, Tom. And I think what we would really love is that for every child that gets an insulin pump, mm -hmm. gets this book or both as a package to go. Don't be afraid. There's your insulin pump. But actually, as a reward, here's a stories of somebody that wears one, and oh. it. it you know, nothing to worry about. That's our dream to be able to do that. Obviously, that would need some sort of sponsorship to do that, but that's what we would like to do. Yes. Um, but secondly, what is really good, and it'll be up to Max, obviously, but Max is really motivated by this, mm. which makes me and Sarah very proud about that. Yeah. So we hope that as he grows older, he keeps this going, even if he's in his teens, in his 20s, in his 30s, yeah. but to keep pushing it and be sort of a you know an, an advocate of diabetes of somebody that yeah. that's what we want him to do to be proud of what he's got rather than hide yeah. it away and you guys and max have done a lot of amazing things already you've done you've been in your local newspaper you've been in balance magazine you talked about world book day and max has gone um to two years now as as captain lanter you obviously like you said you're donating books to children in hospitals and all around the world. And also he did the, the type one balloon challenge. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's spreading that awareness. He's, he's getting out there and he's doing amazing stuff. And I, I saw a picture of um, his banner thing in school and he's pointing up and he's, he's really proud and you can see that in his face. Um, so that banner is actually at Stafford Hospital. Wow. They put it up for us, so it's yeah. it's really good. Yeah. yeah. They go from two different sites, um, from one hospital to the other, and they take it with them and put them up in the in the ward that yeah, they're in at the stuck. time, don't they? So. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. So we donated some. To, we donated a box, didn't we? Some sixty books or whatever to Stafford Hospital, so they could wow. give to the children yeah. while they're coming in. Because that for us is our biggest motivation, Tom. It's helping. Other people, especially families, and, and one of the things for me and Sarah is, and what I want Max to be a part of, and he, well, he is when he's older, I mean, is that when we see newly diagnosed families, we know exactly what they're going through yeah. and where they are at that time. So we, that's where we donate because we contact them yeah. online, yeah. message them privately, and say, look, we would like to send you. A so we're sending one to Canada today. Uh, we've got sent to New Zealand, Australia, everywhere. It's great. Everywhere. It's amazing it's stuff. Priceless. Yeah. So maybe a little bit about um, Balance Magazine and, 
and Max being in the newspaper. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we the Balance magazine was, um, they saw us online, basically, and wanted us to share our story. Because obviously I've been reaching out to Diabetes UK, JDRF, and other people, which have been brilliant because they share some of our stuff and, and um, you know, give us some really good feedback, which is, which is great. Um, so Balance, yeah, Balance magazine, they they asked us to be a part of it. We went off into the woods, didn't we, and had our photos <laughs> done and everything. So that that was really good. Um, got to keep those photos as well, so that that was great. Um, great. We, um, we had his because um, his, his nurses and, and healthcare team, they get that magazine mm. um, in general anyway. And then when they actually saw, because we didn't tell them, when they actually saw him in it, they called us straight and went, oh, he's in the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> so Centre page. Centre page, yeah. that was. And then and the other thing was that we, another dream of ours, and it's always dreams, and, you know, sometimes you need a bit of luck, Tom, but the, the impact it's had on Max at school with the way the children have rea reacted to his book, and the way they talk to Max now about openly can talk about diabetes mm -hmm. at the age of seven and eight is a massive thing. Of course you know, is. and for them to listen as well and be interested is massive. So we wanted, we want really, we would love to see our books in schools so that they, so there's always, we didn't know how, you know, how many children actually had type one diabetes until we become part of this community. And now it's like, wow, it's unbelievable how many people have got it, how many children have got it. So we wanted it in school. So I got hold of our local MP here in Litchfield, Michael Fabricant, Fabricant, who then put he shared our story and put it in the local paper. Yeah, so again, uh, really good. Yeah, awesome stuff. Well done, guys. I think you guys so are like, amazing, and your support for him is it's incredible. And I think you've been on a super journey over the past six years, um, and it'd be great to now to. Uh, chat to Max and, and see what he thinks as well. Yeah, so, yeah. I'll ask him some questions. Yeah, yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah, that'll be interesting. <laughs> if you can get any more words yes. out of him, what yes. we and Sarah can, yes. you can adopt it. Actually, no. Tom can adopt it. Tom died lately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll post him out And he's got, <laughs> he's got a football in the back room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. So on this side. Yeah, the other side. side. <laughs> so let, let's get Max on and uh, let's have a chat, yeah? Yeah. So how old are you, Max? Um, eight years old. Eight years old. And how long have you had diabetes? Um... Can you remember? Not really, I can't remember. About six years now. So quite a long time, isn't it? Yeah. You know when sometimes you get you feel a bit low when you're having a hypo? What's your, what's your favourite hypo treatment that you like um, like to have? My favourite hypo treatment is um, pure juice. And when you have a hypo, do you feel, can you feel it when you have a hypo? Yeah. And what does it feel like? I feel tired, not really like that energised, I just want to stay on the sofa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel good, does it? No. So now you've got the pump, haven't you? Yeah. You've had it for a couple of years and can you talk about it? What does it do? Um, the pump tells you like what your bloods are and um, wow. if they're going up or down. So it's um, basically keeping you so safe. Yeah, that's super cool, isn't it? What do you do if it tells you you're going down? What do you normally do? Um, well, I usually stop playing, but I um, feel a little bit disappointed when I have to stop playing and go on just like sit on the sofa. That's what I really don't like about diabetes. Yeah. Tell me about it, Max. How, how does it make you feel when you see low numbers? Well, sometimes it just makes me feel worried and then... Um, Sometimes, like when I ha have juice after it, I just feel like um, 
I'm gonna be I'm gonna be fine because it's all going up. And then hopefully then after you've had a little rest, you can go back to playing, can't you? Or football yeah. or whatever you like doing. So yeah. what do you like doing, Max? What's your favourite hobbies? I like doing football and um drawing um a little bit of basketball sometimes. Nice. And have you have you tried to draw some of the characters in your books? We're just gonna do um a drawing competition to um draw Captain Mantis. Oh, nice! In school? Um, no, across um the world. Oh wow, that'd be good, wouldn't it? You're gonna put it on Twitter and see how many people um, do it. Yeah, and Facebook. Oh, nice! That'd be cool. Well, can I can I maybe try and have a go at drawing? Yeah. Talking about your diabetes. What do your friends think of it? Do you talk to them about your diabetes? And do they do they know a little bit about diabetes? Um, sometimes I talk about it to my friends. Um, they do think it's cool. Sometimes they do get jealous because I have snacks in the middle of school. Um, yes, yeah, so they think it's really cool. So do you check your levels? In school and at home, do you, do you check your pump and you go, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I check it while um, we play football in school. What made you write the books? Why did you decide to do it? I read the book because I felt like my pump was like Iron Man and I thought I was like a superhero. So I said to my dad, um, dad, my pump is like... Um, Iron Man, and um, maybe we should write a book about I'm a superhero. Wow. So we did for a little bit, and um, we just like had some pages, like did um, pictures, written down. My dad had to do one page, and I had to do one page, and then we come up with the idea, and then we just um, accomplished the book. There we go. Oh, look, I've got a copy as well. Yeah. Cool. Look, created by Max Rapson. How cool is yeah. that? So, Good. so you're eight years old and you have two books. Two books. What's your plans for the future, Max? What would you like to do? Um, I want to do a charity for a cure on diabetes oh, and wow. um, maybe make some more books. Carry on making more books. What do your friends say about your books? Have you showed them? Um, yeah, some, um, some of my class have got um, copies of my books. And do they like your books? Yeah, they liked mine. Um, we read the second one across um, our whole class. Oh, nice. So everyone could hear it. And on World Book Day, normally people all around the country, so people like me who are teachers, or yeah. guys like you uh, go to school, dress up as different characters in, in books. Who did you go as a uh, World Book Day? I dressed up as Captain Lantus. Oh, wow. And not only did you do it for one year, you did it for two years, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. How cool is that? Very cool. So who's your favourite character? in the book? Mostly um, me. Yeah, of course, it has to be. If you're the main person in the book, it has to be you, doesn't it? Yeah. And who's that? Um, her name is Poppy Star. Where did that idea come from? So, Poppy Star is um basically my little cousin in real life. Oh, wow. wow. And we thought that we could make her into the book and make her, like, very fast. That's cool, isn't it? Let's look at your first book. What is the book about, Max? Can you tell us a little bit about what happens in the book? It's basically about um, this evil villain called King Cobb taking away this cube from this town called Beta Town. And everyone in Beta Town has um, diabetes and the special cube helps them. And the villain King Cobb is trying to steal the cube. Ooh. Yeah. And Captain Lantus has to try and stop him from doing it. 
That sounds really good. And what about the second book? What's the second book about? Well, it's basically about sports day, like racing and all them challenges. You also donate all your books or lots of your books to people, don't you? People that have maybe recently been diagnosed with diabetes. Why do you do that? So to make them feel like a superhero so that everyone has, that has diabetes can feel like a superhero so they don't have to be scared of having diabetes. What would your message be to someone like you, Max? So a boy or a girl who's maybe similar age or or just young, um, what would your message be to them um, who may have diabetes, whether it's recently diagnosed or someone who's had it a couple of years or many years? What would your message be to them? I would say um, there's no need to be afraid because um, everyone with type 1 diabetes is um, a superhero, so there's no need to be uh, afraid. Yeah, because you're a superhero. That is good. So what do you want to be when you're older? I want to be um, a film producer. Oh wow, so you want to produce films? Yeah. What type of films do you want to produce? Um, action films. Action films. And could, could The Adventures of Captain Atlantis, could that one day be a film? Yeah. How cool would like, that be? like make it animated. An animated one, oh that'd be good. Go on, Gary, come on, Dad. We need to sort them out. And over the years, Max, you've you've been in your local newspaper. Yeah. You've been in Balance magazine. Yeah. Yeah. And you've done different sort of charity events, haven't you, for raising awareness for Diabetes UK. And you yeah. did the Type 1 Diabetes Balloon Challenge, didn't you? Yeah. And what did you have to do for that? Um, with the Type 1 Diabetes Balloon Challenge, we had to keep the um, balloon up with our hands yeah. while we're like doing something. So I did a video of me checking my thumb while I'm tapping up the balloon. Was there any questions you had for me? Yeah. Oh wow! Are you gonna are you gonna interview me now, Max? <laughs> yeah. Yes. What age was you when you got diagnosed with diabetes? So I was seventeen. So a, a little bit older than you. So I was in school. I was in year twelve. So what year are you in, Max? I'm in year four at the moment. Year four. So I was in year twelve. And I had a couple more years left of school, so I was a teenager. Wow, a long time ago, though. How does it affect you when you go out with friends and family? Ooh, that's a good question. My family are very supportive. My wife is great. She'll help me try and count some carbs. She'll help me if I'm low. So if I'm having a hypo, she'll be able to get my hypo treatment. Harry, my son, he's yeah. very good. I get my phone and every morning, Max, he scans, yeah. he scans my arm to see what levels I am. So he comes in my room, he wakes daddy up and he scans my arm. So all the time he wants to check and see how daddy's doing. So yeah. I did, I did see a video of Harry checking your bloods. Yeah. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Has anyone in your family got diabetes? My granddad had type 1 diabetes. Um, so when I was born, my granddad was still alive and he died very, when I was very young. So I think he died when I was about one or two. So I didn't really know my granddad. Um, but yeah, he had diabetes. Um, and it was so different all them years ago. So we're talking 32 years ago when he was here. 
Um, and it's changed so much with all the technology and all the cool things like your pump. Um, yeah. But yeah, he, he had diabetes. And actually, when I was diagnosed, I was really poorly maxed. And my mum uh, was really concerned because I was losing a lot of weight. I was drinking a lot of juice or milk. I used to drink loads of milk, Max. <laughs> and then I used to go to the toilet a lot of the time. So my mum one day came into my room and, oh, there's my alarm going off to tell me to take my injections. <laughs> so one day my mum came into my room, Max, and yep. she could smell like pear sweets. And it's like a acid smell. And she just knew from then, or she thought I had diabetes. So she rang the doctor and said, my son's not really good, he's really poorly. And I went to hospital, they did all my blood levels, and that was it. What did your granddad have for diabetes? Like a needle or a scanner or, well, not a pump. Well, did he have a needle or um, like a scan thing? Wow, that's a really good question. So. It was a long time ago, so it would have been over 32 years ago. Um, I'm not sure when he got diabetes, but back then it would have been big needles. So sometimes you get like the pens, the insulin pens, but these would have had big sort of syringes. He never was able to scan his arm because the technology wasn't there and he wasn't able to have a pump because the technology wasn't there mm. it's only recently it's come and it's good that we've got it what do you think of the technology max well i think we're lucky to have the technology did you like my books and which one was your favorite my favorite so yes i loved your books my favorite probably was the first one because it was the start of the adventure. It was talking about Beta Town. It was explaining about all the people in Beta Town having diabetes, and it was introducing all the characters. I just felt it was the start of the, the journey. And now you've made a second one, and I look forward to seeing maybe the next one after that. But I think this one was my favorite. I would say it's my second one. Would you? Yeah. Why? I kind, of, I kind of like sports day activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like doing sports day activities in school? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favourite sports day activity? The racing one. The racing one, yeah. I'm very fast at it. Do you think it will inspire other children to feel like a superhero? Your books? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I never had things like this when growing up and I think it would really help people when diagnosed to read your book and feel confident and really motivate them and help them so yeah I think it will will do really well to inspire people and I think because you and your dad have done it Max it makes it even more special that the book is written by someone who has diabetes and does amazing things for diabetes. So I think, yeah, it will help a lot of people. So well done, buddy. Thank you. So thank you for coming on, Max. It's been great. It's been nice talking to you and, and, and mum and dad as well. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>